Well, in this short video, we're simply going to do two more examples uh, using compositions of functions. So in our first example, we're asked to do two things. We're given this function f, a linear function, 5x plus 6. f of x is 5x plus 6. And g of x, this looks like a quadratic, a second order polynomial. g of x is 2x squared minus x minus 1. So we want to find these two new functions. We're given two functions. We want to find f composed with g of x and g composed with f of x. And if you think we're going to get the same result, well, we're not. So let's, let's show that. All right, so remember what f composed with g of x is. It's simply f of g of x. So what am I going to plug into the function f? I'm going to plug in g of x. So let's just do that. Let's go up here and grab our function f, but plug in g of x. So if I replace this x with g of x, I have to replace this x with g of x. So I'm going to say that this is equal to 5 times g of x plus 6. <clears throat> so notice this looks just like this right here, only instead of evaluating at x, I plugged in g of x. And now let's just substitute. What is g of x? g of x is 2x squared minus x minus 1. Let's replace that now. 5 times, you must put parentheses there, 2x squared minus x minus 1. And then we've got plus 6. Okay, so this part in parentheses is just g of x. We'll distribute the 5 through this parentheses, and we'll add 6, and we'll be done. So that'll be 10x squared minus 5x minus 5, right? But what's minus 5 plus 6 plus 1? <clears throat> so this is f of g of x. Now let's do it the other direction. g of f, g composed with f of x, is g of f of x. So what am I going to plug into this function g? Well, not x. I'm going to plug in f of x. So this is going to look like 2 times f of x minus oops, I'm sorry, 2 times f of x squared minus f of x minus 1. <clears throat> All right, this will give us 2 times, we're just going to substitute here, f of x is 5x plus 6, in parentheses squared, minus 5x plus 6, again, in parentheses, it has to be there because we have a minus sign in front of f of x, minus 1. So we'll just do some uh, arithmetic and simplify, and we'll be done with this problem. Let's see. <clears throat> it's going to take me a couple of steps. Two times. Let's FOIL this out. The first would be 5x times 5x, 25x squared. And then remember what the inner and outer would be? It would be 5x times 6, 30x twice, which is 60x. So this is the O plus the I of FOIL. This is the F, and this is O plus I, because O and I are both 30x. And then the last times last would be 36. And then a minus 1 there. <clears throat> so let's just distribute the 2 through and subtract 1, and we're done. 50x squared plus 120x plus... 2 times 36 is 72, but there's a minus 1 here, so I'll put plus 71. So one of the important points of this problem was to show that f of g of x is not the same as g of f of x for most functions. There are some rare cases, which we are going to study, where they will be equal to each other, but not in this case. <clears throat> All right, I got one more, one more problem. 
we're at, we've got f of x is 4 over x plus 2. g of x is 1 over x. We need to find f of g of x, f composed with g of x, and its domain. Okay, well, let's go ahead just for the fun of it. Let's find out what the domain of f is. <clears throat> What's the domain of f? This one I think you can do in your heads. The only problem would be the number for x that gives me a zero in the denominator. What would that be? Negative 2. Imagine plugging in f of negative 2. If x is negative 2, we get 4 over, 4 over negative 2 plus 2. 4 over 0. It's not even a number. So it's going to be all real numbers except for minus negative 2. Now let's do the domain of g. We've already done this one before. The domain of g, the only problem number is 0, because you can't have 1 over 0. All real numbers except for 0. Now, the domain of the new function might look different than this, than, than both of those. Okay, so let's first find f of g of x. So f composed with g of x by definition is f of g of x. So let's plug g of x into f. So I'm going to go to f and replace 1 over x with that x. Right? So it's going to give me a 4 over g of x. I'm going to write it in steps here, plus 2. That's because we're plugging in g of x into f, not x. We're plugging in g of x. So we put g of x in place of that x. Well, what's that equal to? I'm going to go to the right here. It's 4 over g of x is 1 over x plus 2. <clears throat> Now that's not an, an acceptable way to leave an answer because this is in some classes that'd be called a complex fraction bec uh, because we have a fraction in the denominator of the fraction. So how can we clear that out? We can multiply it by the same number or same expression on top and bottom, which would be like multiplying it by one and it'll make it look better. Basically you take any fractions that are in the numerator, which there's none, and the denominator, there's only one. And you find out what the least common denominator is. What's the least common denominator of one fraction? Well, it's, it's the denominator of that fraction. I'm going to multiply by x over x. <clears throat> okay? So, what does that give us on top? 4x. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to distribute. It's x times 1 over x plus x times 2. What is x times 1 over x? x over x, that's a 1. And x times 2 is 2x. I reverse the order, just to put it in a better order. OK, so this is f composed with g of x. Now, what is the domain of this function? You might be tempted to say, well, it's everything except the number that will, for x that will make the denominator a 0. What one number is that? Let's go ahead and see. 2x plus 1, set it equal to 0, would mean 2x is equal to negative 1. x equals negative 1 half. So you might say that the domain of f composed with g is all reals except for negative one half. But recall what I said earlier. When you want to find the domain, you don't want to simplify first. You want to do it before we multiply the top and bottom by x over x, <clears throat> by, or top and bottom by x. We want to look at this. <clears throat> now, the denominator, um, the denominator here cannot be equal to zero, right? 
Well, let's see what that gives us. This, this denominator, 1 over x plus 2. Let's set it equal to 0 and find out what number does it for us. Okay, subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, so we can basically switch places with these two. Um, you can think of it as when you have a fraction equal to a fraction, that means cross products are equal. So 1, negative 2x is equal to 1. So divide by negative 2, and what do we get? Eh, what we already have, x equals negative 1 half. And remember, that's a bad number. If you, if you plug in x equals 1 half, you're going to get a 0 in this denominator. <clears throat> but what we missed out in is we also have 1 over x, which means x cannot equal 0. So we actually get two numbers because here's the domain. Why did we get two numbers? Well, guess what? We have two fractions. If x is negative 2, it makes the entire denominator 0. So that's bad. But if x is a 0, it makes this denominator a 0. You can't divide by 0. So we found the domain of the composition of functions.